Hey, I'm gonna show you a super easy way to implement interactions between the player and the world of your game. We're gonna make it modular and flexible, so in a few minutes you'll have a system that you can just slot into any and every game you make in Godot. Without further ado, let's Godot! We can choose to implement interactions in one of two ways, using inheritance and using composition. Neither is wrong, but I feel Godot favors composition and it makes the game making process easier. So instead of creating a scene called interactable and inheriting our interactable objects from it, we'll make an interaction area scene, which we can pop into any object we want to be interacted with. We'll also create an interaction manager scene to handle player interaction with multiple objects. Let's create an interaction folder and inside it another interaction area folder in which we'll create an interaction area scene with the root node being area 2D. Let's set up the collision for the area by expanding collision. For the layer I'm gonna choose nothing and for the mask I'm gonna choose player. You just have to make sure that your player scene's collision layer is the same as your interaction area collision mask. Let's add a script to the interaction area. First of all, let's name the script by using class name and name it interaction area. Then let's export a string variable called action name and set its default value to interact. This is the text that will be shown above an object to indicate it can be interacted with. Then let's create a variable interact of type callable and initialize it to a function that will just say pass. A callable is a type of variable that holds a function. Any object with an interaction area can override this interact callable and provide its own implementation for the interaction. I'll give you two concrete examples of this later on. Now in the interaction folder, let's create an interaction manager scene, which will be of type node2d. Let's add a label, which will indicate which object can be interacted with. Let's set its text to E to interact for example, but we'll override this in code. Set the horizontal and vertical alignment to center. And under layout, set anchor preset to center top. Go down to theme overrides, fonts, and drag and drop a font. Also under ordering, let's set the Z index to something like 20, so the text appears above other elements. Now let's set up a couple things in the project settings. In the input map, add a new action called interact and assign it a button. I set mine to E. Then in the auto load, load up the interaction manager and press add. So now our interaction manager is a singleton and it's auto loaded. Now it's time to write the interaction manager script. First we'll get to player by writing on ready var player equals get three dot get first node in group with the group being player. Of course, make sure your player is indeed in the player group. We're also gonna get the label from the scene. Let's make a constant called base text and set it to a string of E2. This is the first part of the interaction label and the other part is going to be the action name that we defined in our interaction area. Let's make a variable called active areas and set it to an empty array. This variable will hold all interaction areas that currently can be interacted with. Let's also make var can interact and set that to true. The idea is that all interaction areas will register themselves in the interaction manager once the player enters them and they will unregister themselves once the player leaves them. So let's make functions for that. Let's make function register area with a parameter called area of type interaction area and it's simply going to push this area into our active areas. Let's also make a function called unregister area, which is also going to take an area parameter of type interaction area, and then it will find the index of the passed in area by calling active areas dot find area, and will check if the index is not equal to minus one, that is the index exists in the array, and if it exists, we're going to remove the area from the active areas. So active areas dot remove at with a specified index. Okay, so now we have all the interaction areas that can be currently interacted with in the interaction manager, but what do we want to do with them? Well, first of all, we want to show the interaction label above an area that can be interacted with. So for that, we'll go into the process function and we'll check if active areas dot size is greater than zero and can interact is true. 
in which case we want to sort all our active areas so the first active area is the one closest to the player. To do that we'll write active areas dot sort custom which takes a custom sorting function which we will call sort by distance to player and we have to implement that right now. So sort by distance to player is gonna take two parameters area1 and area2 and we're gonna make a variable area1 to player which is going to get the player's global position dot distance to area 1's global position. Similarly, we're going to create an area 2 to player variable, which is going to be player dot global position dot distance to area 2 dot global position. And since we want to return the area which is closer to the player, we're going to return area 1 to player less than area 2 to player. So now that we have our active areas sorted, the first element is going to be the interaction area that is closest to the player and we want to show our label above that area. So we'll set label.text equals base text plus active areas with the index of zero dot action name. We also want to set the labels global position to active areas index zero dot global position. We want to offset the labels global position y by 36 pixels. And we also want to center the label horizontally by writing label.globalposition.x minus equals label.size.x over 2. Then we're gonna call label.show to make the label visible. And finally we're gonna write else label.hide. So in the case that there are no active areas or can interact is false, we wanna make the label invisible. And finally we have to handle when the player presses the interaction button. So we're gonna write func input and we're gonna check if event is action pressed, our interact action that we set up earlier, and also if can interact is true. Then we're gonna check if active areas.size is more than zero, so the player is within an active area, in which case we're gonna set can interact to false and hide the label. We're going to await the active areas at index zero, so our closest active area, dot interact, dot call. Since interact is a callable, we cannot call it like a normal function with just a set of parentheses, but we have to write dot call. Other than that, it's just like calling any other function. And we expect this function to be asynchronous, which will depend on however you implement it in your interaction objects. But after we await for it, we're just gonna set can interact back to true. Okay, so now all that's left to do is go to our interaction area and in the node tab, we're going to connect the body entered signal and the body exited signal. So the area can register itself in the interaction manager properly. In on body entered, we're gonna call interaction manager dot register area and we're gonna pass in self and in on body exited we're going to write interaction manager dot unregister area and we're also gonna pass in self i have an npc here and i would like to have an interaction area on him and when the player interacts i want to start the dialogue so first of all i'm gonna add our interaction area and in the inspector i'm gonna change action name to talk and now the area has this warning symbol because it doesn't have a collision shape. So I have to add a collision shape and it can be any shape I want. I'm gonna choose a circular shape and expand it a little bit. And now in the script, first of all, I got the interaction area from the scene. Then in the ready function, I set the interaction areas interact to a new callable. And when you're making a new callable, you have to pass in two arguments. First of all, the object that holds the function of the callable. So this is going to be self and then the name of the function, which is on interact in this case. Then I implemented the on interact function to start a dialogue managers dialog. And I'm awaiting for the signal of the dialogue manager that the dialogue is finished, which effectively makes this interact function asynchronous. And the interaction manager will have to await for this dialogue to finish before allowing us to interact with other objects. This is the dialogue manager created in my text box video, but it's a little bit modified because I added a signal dialogue finished and I just emit it once the dialogue is finished. Here's another example. I have this lamp and I would like the player to interact with it to turn it on and off. Just like before, I'm adding the interaction area object and I'm gonna change the action name to toggle. 
I'm adding the collision shape, but in this case it's going to be a rectangular shape. And in the code I got the interaction area from the tree. In the ready function I implemented its interact variable as a callable with the first parameter self and the second parameter is a function called toggle lamp. I implemented toggle lamp by just switching the sprites around. And in this case toggle lamp is not an asynchronous function, so the interaction manager is not going to be awaiting for it to finish. Check out more short form Godot tutorials by clicking the playlist on screen and thank you for watching.